Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I'm Trace, and this is our series on human connection. You are in the midst of episode four of five in this series, so make sure you subscribe so you get all of our episodes, and go back and watch the first three if you haven't already. But today we're going to talk about how we fall in love, and if we're bad at knowing what love is. We've all heard about love at first sight, right? This is a thing. It's a thing especially in, you know, animated movies for children. Uh, there are arguments against this idea, you know, you don't have sufficient knowledge about the person who you just met. You can't marry a prince from another country, you just met him today. Come on, let it go. You don't know their characteristics, you don't know their demeanor. The person might be attractive, but you need more than that to get real romantic love. But that might not be entirely true. This is according to Dr. Aaron Benziev, the former president of the University of Haifa. And they say that in love at first sight, the high value accorded to the other's external appearance is projected onto his or her internal characteristics. Love at first sight can often mislead since it is based more on imagination than on sight. However, it can still be love and is often very intense. Professor Benziev concluded that love at first sight is an intense form of romantic love. Let's think of it as like a shot of love as opposed to a long meal of love. That shot of love might blossom into more. You can have a shot and then also have a full meal. If the person's characteristics end up matching the assumptions that you made in your imagination when you first met. So let's say you're out somewhere and you see someone and you're like, bam, shot of love. Now you gotta flirt. Luckily, science is here for you. Flirting is like a psychological study of the other person. You're testing to see if they respond in the way that you hope, if they can spar with you mentally, if it's all clicking. You know, there's nothing quite like meeting someone, flirting with them, and having everything work out. According to a study by Corinne Ferris of Indiana University's Department of Psychological and Brain Sciences, young men find it difficult to tell the difference between women who are being friendly and women who are interested in something more. That's a quote. Because sometimes flirting is such subtle behavior that men are trying to paint all the communication with this large brush. They only see what they want, right? The study examined nonverbal communication in a group of 280 undergraduate students, both men and women, with the average age of being about 20. The students viewed images of women and men on a computer screen. They weren't even interacting with real people. And the subjects would then categorize each picture as friendly, sexually interested, sad, or rejecting. But it wasn't just that guys thought the smallest nonverbal cues were come-ons. The opposite was also found to be true. They also think that the woman's sexual advances are just them being friendly. So sometimes they can't even tell the difference between friend and flirt, and then flirt and friend. Man, what's wrong with us? Sometimes when people are flirting, those messages are just getting completely scrambled, which is probably why it's better to communicate more than less. The study concluded that women categorized men's intentions more correctly, but both men and women are gonna benefit from talking it out rather than just making assumptions. Women are just better at picking it out of the crowd. There is actually a way to turn interest or flirtatious behavior into a deep love connection as well. In a study conducted by psychologist Arthur Aaron, all you gotta do is ask a series of questions and then stare at someone, not in a creepy way. They have to stare at you too and they have to wanna to do this. A series of questions exists, according to Arthur Aaron, that can make people fall in love. The idea is you become open and vulnerable at an accelerated rate. So according to the study's author, one key pattern associated with the development of a close relationship among peers is sustained, escalating, reciprocal, personal self-disclosure. Let me say that one more time. Sustained, escalating, reciprocal, personal self-disclosure. Talk about yourself in increasing ways that makes you feel good and also is reciprocated over time. After the questions were asked, the two participants in the study were told to stare into each other's eyes for up to four minutes. After that, boom, love, baby. This was a very highly reported study, but interestingly, you can actually try this. There's a link down in the description. You can try it out. But just being in love doesn't mean that you're gonna spend the rest of your life with that person. 
And I just want to take a second and thank K Jewelers for sponsoring this episode. Every kiss begins with K. You know, there's this conversion that happens at some point where we decide, I love this person and now I want to marry them. And that's a tough conversion to have. So if you want to know more about it, you should come back tomorrow and watch more Test Tube Plus. Let us know down in the comments if you've gone through that transition. Try and tell us what it felt like. And also come find us on Twitter. You can find the show at Test Tube. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow on Test Tube Plus.